Okay, and thank you again for your patience, everybody. We are going to get started here. It's uh, just a couple minutes after the hour. Uh, and welcome to the second part of our year-end demo series. Um, and in this segment, we'll be covering intelligent change management for our Salesforce platform. My name is Paul Staz. I'm an account executive here at StrongPoint. And I have with me on the line, Brian Vera, who is one of our customer success consultants. Brian does uh, a little bit of pre-sales work, but he's also one of the team members that will be walking you through the implementation and training. So uh, we always love having Brian on uh, before you've signed on so that he can set all the right expectations with you. So thank you for joining, Brian. So in terms of agenda for the day, I'm going to start off by giving you a, a quick overview of really what we mean by intelligent change management. Uh, once we've kind of at least laid that foundation in place, I'll pass it over to Brian and, and he'll give you a... Uh, uh, a high-level product demonstration so that you can see some of the tools and, and I'm sure that will really help give you a much better idea of, of what this is all about. Um, once Brian is done, he'll he'll pass it back over to me and, and I'll finish with just a quick summary of, of some of the things that we've learned today and we'll save time for questions. So um, on that note, if questions do come to mind throughout the webinar, uh, please feel free to drop them into the, the questions box. And we'll do our best to, to answer them as we go. Uh, but if we if we can't cover them during the session, we'll make sure that at the end here, we, we do spend some time just to give you all your answers. And without further ado, I will get started. So in case you're not familiar with us, here at StrongPoint, our mission is to provide our clients with stress-free system documentation, change management, and compliance. And now given that this is the, the second of the three-part webinar series, today we're going to cover change management or uh, as we call it here at StrongPoint, intelligent change management. And so what does that really mean? Now, in our, in our first session, in case you, didn't, you weren't able to make it, we covered our automated system documentation, where in about a week's time and with only an hour or two of your actual involvement, you can have the best system documentation that you can really imagine. But it doesn't stop there. It's then about what do you do with it or, or what does StrongPoint then do with it to help provide you with a, a more efficient change management process. And so... For us, it really starts with policies and processes. And so we put in, in place sensible, understandable policies that help you mitigate material risk during your everyday business. And then we take those in, that information along with the system documentation and we start automating processes such as uh, your risk and impact analysis or managing your change approvals, whether it's uh, exclusively inside StrongPoint uh, or if it's integrated in with, with another uh, provider such as JIRA or ServiceNow. And with, with those policies and processes in place, you're now in a position where every change that takes place in your system is matched to a, a relevant policy and or change record or request. And if not, then it, it lands on what we call a non-compliant change report. And, and this last point is, is critical. Uh, and so it's not just about what changes do you know about, it's about what changes did you not know about or what changes were not done properly. And, and that's one of the things that we're able to really highlight and summarize for you. And, and Brian will touch on that today. And, and really the goal here is that by putting in place all of these things, it puts you in the position where you've now got these policies or controls in place that you can then report on uh, at any given time. And you can, you can track it by policy, by, by approval request, by process, by object type, or, or any other key metrics that you might have. So it really does provide that transparency and visibility that so many organizations are looking to, uh, looking to achieve. So uh, that's really the end of, of the quick little overview to get things started. So with that, excuse me, what I will do is, is pass this over to Brian. And what Brian's going to do is, is start off by giving you a, a quick uh, summary, I guess, of, of what we covered in our last session. And uh, then he will very quickly move on to the intelligent change management portion of, of, our, of our presentation. Thank you very much, Paul. Okay, so uh, welcome to the uh, change management session. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to do a quick recap of the documentation uh, aspect of our application and then we're going to move on to intelligent management and then we're going to see some uh, great things that can help you uh, run your Salesforce instance better manage change better and also help you uh, avoid material risk okay so um, what happens is we deploy a package to your Salesforce instance and that Salesforce instance, then that uh, package then starts to build uh, documentation of all, of all your um, customizations. And we are tracking across the 120 types. Um, so we will build customization details for every metadata type, uh, your validation rules, 
your um, escalation rules, your assignment rules, uh, workflows, um, custom fields, and all that uh, 120 de- uh, metadata types. Uh, also to note, our application is 100% a cloud application. There is no back end or middleware, so your data stays uh, within Salesforce and is not exposed to anyone you do not want to expose it to. So once we create the documentation and create um, the customizations, uh, detail records, we then um, do a process called make join where we show you the relationships between these dependencies, uh, b- between these customizations and other dependencies. And this is what it kind of, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to show you this through the entity diagram. So I'm just going to engage it here. And from here, you can pick any object, any um, uh, object, a standard object or um, a custom object. So let's pick out the account object, which everyone is familiar with. So what you're looking at is the account object and you're looking at the uh, uh, custom fields under the account object. So it's as simple as just clicking through each custom field. And then we're able to see the relationships and dependencies uh, with the custom field. So here I'm going to pick out this one. It's a multi-pick list. Uh, It's called company social media. Uh, And here you can see uh, that there are dependencies here. There's uh, some reports that layouts and report types. This helps you to answer the question, uh, if I change this, what will it break? And it gives you uh, full visibility and a line of sight into the impact that would happen if you were to change something. So let's pick one more here. So as you can see, I've picked out a uh, custom field. It's called the discount code. So we can see here from here that uh, there are some relationships and dependencies with other customization, giving us a full line of sight to where the customizations uh, extend to. So here we can see that we have um, an Apex trigger and Apex class that could potentially uh, stop firing or be compromised if we were to change anything here in this particular custom field. And then we also see um, some reports, uh, some layouts that will be impacted. And then we can also see some downstream impact in in the form of workflow rules and approval processes that would be compromised. And also an extended type here, the report type that would be uh, could be potentially broken if the uh, we were to change something here. So these are not just um, configuration changes uh, that we'd be worried about, but we could also have real uh, material risk. For example, if I was to change something here, uh, it could impact this report, which is the revenue report, which is a financial report, or this report here, which is a discounted package, which is also a financial report. So we could actually have real material risk um, and we could potentially uh, stop this report from giving full results. And what if the uh, CFO uh, relies on this report to to project the company's financials? From here, we can actually go um, from this entity diagram, we can actually go uh, further and see associations with other customizations. So if we click on this one, we'll see that this is also extending to some reports. This uh, this Apex class is extending to some report uh, to also some workflows and approvals here. Now, what does this look like um, when we take a look at the detail record for the customization? So I'm just gonna open one here. Okay, so this is the level of details that we show you for each and every customization uh, that StrongPoint built. So if, let's say, for example, you have 20,000 customization, you will get 20,000 of these customized details that are updated on a daily basis automatically in your back end, in, in your Salesforce instance, they'll be automated. And these are the level of details that we show you. So uh, in this example, we can see that, that we can see the customization name. We, we show you the API name. We show you who, who created that customization, who is the person who last modified it. We show you what the actual uh, Salesforce type is. And we show you the uh, parent object where it belongs to, as well as the actual Salesforce ID. And underneath here, we have some tabs uh, that show you the associations with other uh, associations and relationships with other dependencies. So we have a metadata tab here. 
Uh, we have a scripting tab here that shows you the scripts that are attached to these customizations, uh, reports that are attached to these customizations, uh, layouts here. Uh, the improvement tabs helps, uh, helps you flag um, customizations that you would like to uh, clean up or delete or archive so we can actually flag them and put uh, different statuses on them. Like, for example, I'm going to say that uh, I do not remember authorizing this customization, so I'm going to put it under investigation and the report will flag it and show the customizations that you flag for different purposes and that helps you clean up and optimize your Salesforce instance. Here we, we see some um, workflows that are using uh, that are using this customization or part of this customization. Um, roles shows us if, for example, we had created a permission set for this particular customization, the permission set would be listed here and all the users would be uh, listed here. So this gives you a full visibility of your customizations, who's using it, what permission set, and you can see all this from one screen without having to go to several different menus to see these things. Uh, controls shows um, a, uh, a customization that you've put for uh, more stringent monitoring. Uh, as well as the raw data. So this can actually uh, be a code repository and you can see the, uh, the raw data of each and every customization that you have. If it's under a package, uh, we'll say, uh, Salesforce point will tell you what the package is and what state it is in. And this is for extended Salesforce types. Uh, as well as creating this kind of documentation for each and every customization, we also create change logs. So every change that is uh, is initiated, whether it's system initiated, user or platform initiated, there'll be a change log that will be that will be created here, uh, and it's a history of your customization as it is changing over time. Okay. So now that we've uh, done a recap of documentation, we're going to start discussing the uh, change management aspect of our application. So as uh, Paul aptly mentioned, we have um, there are change policies, and we set these change policies, uh, and we set uh, ITGC controls on these policies, uh, depending on our business goals and all, all the things that we want to uh, put under further uh, scrutiny. All right. So we are going to create um, a process issue. So a process issue basically is a triaging uh, system. It helps you, it helps the user um, understand what kind of, um, what level of compliance would be needed for um, something to be compliant. And it shows you what level of controls are, uh, are set on a particular uh, customization or a particular class of customization. So we're just going to create one here. So we'll say update um, this uh, process report. Okay. And then here um, in this type, we can actually uh, assign a type. So we'll just say uh, uh, medium importance here and we can actually assign a, a status uh, and we'll say it's in progress and then here we can actually uh, choose uh, what um, what customization we're going to put in scope here okay so we've put our customization here and then we're going to save it so here uh, we've saved it and uh, StrongPoint is showing us that for this particular customization, it's only a log changes only. So this actually helps us see what change level is required than re relying on the, hey Bob, um, do I need to, uh, to get approvals or not? So this is showing us for, in, in this instance that we, we can go ahead and create the, uh, change the customization. Uh, and strong point will log the changes. Here we can also um, associate this process issue to an external ticket link through Jira or ServiceNow. Um, and we can um, link them to each other for, uh, for CAB and other purposes. 
So let's edit this one and add a new customization. Okay. And we're going to save it. Uh, and as you can see, based on the customization, which is a workflow rule, uh, StrongPoint has reported back that we need to go through a full software development lifecycle. So that could be that could entail us going into uh, the our sandbox, developing into our sandbox, um, uh, up promoting the customization into a full sandbox for uh, a UAT for UAT and um, uh, testing, and then promoting the code into our production after uh, UAT acceptance. Okay, so from here, what do we do with this? We can actually create a, uh, a change request. So in this change request, we've created a change request. Uh, we have the customizations in scope. So I just wanna draw uh, your attention to a couple of things. So from here, um, we can actually approve or reject the customization if we are named on the policies as approvers. And here we actually show you the history and the status of the, um, the change request, whether it's approved or not, or whether it's complete or not. And in this, and pressing in this button, we can actually import customizations from uh, change sets. We can import from package manifests. Um, uh, such as uh, IDEs, such as uh, Eclipse, Maven's Mate, and other IDs. So it's showing us that the change level is required for this to be compliant is a full software development lifecycle, and this is the stage. And this is the customizations that we've put in scope. And let's take a look at the analysis impact. After we have put our um, customizations in scope for change, we can actually do a full uh, an, uh, impact analysis and see what would be impacted if we were to change these customizations that are in scope. Okay, so we're going to open a full screen here and take a look. So strong point shows you for each customization you put in scope, it shows you what the impacts would be. So we've got this one called the discount code. So as we can see in plain English, that there are dependent scripts that would be impacted if we were to change this. There are actually uh, dependent workflows, dependent search, uh, searches, and other dependencies, uh, reports and report types that would be impacted that if we were to change this. So for anything that you put in scope, StrongPoint will show you what would be impacted, what could be broken by it, uh, and gives you the ability to actually analyze the impact, study the impact, create implement implementation plans that could mitigate against the impact. Um, some of our users actually use this for their uh, sprint planning uh, sessions. They'll bring the they'll bring the change request, put these customizations in scope here, and then they're able to groom candidates for uh, their sprints. So they could say, for example, okay, so this discount code here seems to be really dangerous. There seems to be a lot of impact. So what we're going to do is we're, we are going to put it into sprint one so that we can do more analysis and planning and more resourcing uh, in terms of um, uh, people who would be working on this. And then this one seems simple. So let's just go ahead and put this one in uh, sprint one. So it becomes an impact analysis tool. It also becomes a tool. It can also be used as a tool for grooming sprints and planning and resourcing uh, your work. And once we have done this, um, there's other things that we can do. So let's go ahead and just um, go ahead and approve this. So as I'm an approver on this policy, I'm going to approve it on behalf of the other approvers as well. So let's approve it. So once the change request is approved, there are other things that we can do. We can actually uh, then create a deployment ticket so that we can move the change. So StrongPoint not only helps you in the continuous development lifecycle in terms of uh, one, creating uh, documentation that you use to manage manage change. Two, uh, we create uh, we can go through a change request to then do an automated impact analysis 
uh, and then we can actually create from the change once we do the impact analysis we can actually deploy the change uh, using storm point and you can f physically move uh, the changes from one environment uh, to another so also on this change request we can actually also do environment comparison before we move uh, the, the changes and we can uh, do our pre-deployment and post-deployment uh, um, validations. All right. So uh, now let's take a quick look at some of the reports that uh, StrongPoint shows you in terms of your changes. Okay. So we're just going to look at um, the change management reports. As you can see, there are a variety of reports that you can use uh, for compliance. Because when you have uh, auditing teams coming to com to uh, audit your uh, Salesforce instance, they'll ask, they'll look for reports that show, they'll, they'll ask for uh, reports that show com uh, compliant changes. They'll ask for a report that shows uh, non-compliant changes and also uh, changes that were uh, non-compliant but have been resolved. So let's take a quick look at what the uh, open compliant changes report looks like. So these are the level of details that we show in your uh, in our open non-compliant changes. As we can see, we as you can see here, uh, the change log is attached to 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 the particular customization that's been reported on the reason why it was not compliant. Uh, we also show you the customization name, uh, the API name. We also show you the new and old value. Uh, this also gives you the opportunity to reverse negative changes by seeing what the old and new value is. And in, uh, in plain uh, English details, we tell you exactly what the change was, um, what, what the change overview was, what was done to it, and as well as the accompanying old value and new value. So you are able to have full visibility of your changes. You know, you are aware of the changes that happened that you knew of and changes that you didn't know of um, in terms of things that were not authorized, uh, platform changes, uh, system updates, and other changes that you are not aware of. So it gives you a full visibility of all your changes. With that said, uh, I'm going to pass back to, to Paul for any for wrap up and for any further questions. That's great. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate you giving us uh, such a great overview and demo. So by way of kind of summarizing or, or, or wrapping up, I want to talk quickly about what we learned today. And, and so first thing is how StrongPoint answers the question, if I change this, what will break? And, and this is um, a question that we know so many of our clients were battling with and, and, and still ask themselves at times. Um, and so there's really two ways that Brian summarized. And one of them is the ERD view that he showed you, which is the visual representation of your documentation. And so with the ERD view, you can click through and quickly understand any interdependencies that, that exist uh, among all of your customizations and standard objects. And then you can drill in to actually see the customization detail records and, and really get access to the information that you're looking for. So by going through the ERD, you can answer, if I change this, what will, what will break? But then also by following the strong point uh, change management process, the automated risk and impact analysis really does all of that work for you. So StrongPoint will read your system documentation, will understand it and interpret it, and then we'll lay it all out for you and we'll summarize the risk associated and the impact associated with a, a change to a customization. So those are really the two ways. And, and for many of our customers, this has just been um, of, of a huge benefit. The, the second point here is how we can add tremendous velocity to your project lifecycle. And so, here, if you think about the time that it takes your organization to do a lot of the discovery and planning steps involved in a, in a new project, um, and then think about how StrongPoint can help automate those for you and, and streamline them and, and, and give you access to the information that would sometimes take you uh, days or even weeks to really figure out. And, and we just put it all for you. So really, in terms of how we can add velocity, well, that's exactly it. We can basically help you significant or, or skip very significant steps inside your process. And the third here is how to detect and manage non-compliant changes quickly and easily. And this is really what Brian was showing you at the, at the end there, that at any given time you can run this report and you can show every change that was made that was compliant and, and made either, you know, 
that did not involve any material risk, and so we've just logged that change for you, or that it did involve risk, but you followed the appropriate process and you had the appropriate approvals in place. Uh, or on the flip side, and what's usually most important, it's that other kind of 1% or 2% of the changes that are taking place in your system that, that did in fact have a lot of risk and maybe did not follow those same processes. And that's where we summarize those for you. And that's where you need to go back and spend time on them and, and, and mitigate the risk that was posed by those changes. So this was the end of the second session of our three-part webinar series. Uh, join us again same time next week where we'll cover enterprise compliance. Um, and if you, uh, if you haven't already registered, you can do so on our blog at strongpoint.io front slash blog hyphen home. Uh, or if you can't make it, but you're still interested in learning more, uh, you can reach out directly to garnet.bellic at strongpoint.io. Uh, that's G-A-R-N-E-T dot B-E-L-I-K at strongpoint.io. And we can set up uh, an individual session where we can go through one of our success plans and, and really understand what your unique uh, goals and requirements are, um, kind of tailor a solution for you, and then present a more, a more customized or personalized demo for you. Uh, we're more than happy to do that. Um, and just taking a quick look at questions.